This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is our final Dinger Tuesday before we get to week one of the NFL season. And I feel like I haven't done a good enough job this year of respecting this holy day that is Dinger Tuesday. So for today, we're going to talk about some baseball here on the show. I will talk about my favorite Dinger P- Tuesday pick of the night over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll also talk through some money lines and strikeout props I like for tonight. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Here to break down Tuesday's MLB slate with once again all 30 teams in action for tonight so plenty to choose from for money lines strikeout props and of course our dinger tuesday selection as well we'll dive into all that here throughout the show for today but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast you can find us wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify as well. Tomorrow, our college football week one preview with Dr. Ed Fang will be up talking about biggest games for this upcoming week uh, with Ed. As always, we also have a season long player prop show for the NFL up with JJ Zacharyson already posted. So get those on the covering the spread podcast feed, FanDuel YouTube and FanDuel TV plus. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can be on or bet on everything from the player or spreads and player props and more FanDuel official partner of the NFL must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WIT-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1 877 Hope and Wire. Text Hope and Wire in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9 18 23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Commercial use is excluded. Let's dig in now to this Tuesday MLB slate and start things off with the money lines I like for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The first one is going to be one we were on last night at actually the exact same number that did not go in our favor. That is the Boston Red Sox taking on the Houston Astros. Right now, the Red Sox money line is minus 120. And despite what occurred last night, I do still think that the Red Sox are a bit undervalued here at minus 120 as of right now. The Red Sox facing J.P. France tonight. They just saw him last week down in Houston. And in that game, they chased him after two and a third innings. And France allowed 10 earned runs in that game. Now, that was kind of an anomaly for France because his results have been very good recently. But I don't think it was totally out of nowhere because his peripherals have not been great pretty much the entire year. If we turn to France's past 10 outings, including that Red Sox game, he has a 4.74 skill interactive ERA, and his hard hit rate is about average at 38.9%. Now, we do see pitchers who are able to outperform their peripherals over a large sample. But usually when we have those guys, they are pitchers who are outliers or very good in suppressing hard contact. They get great bad at ball data. And as mentioned, France isn't really that guy for the most part. 
He's facing Brian Bayo. He held Easton to one run across seven innings last time out. Uh, pushed his ERA down to 3.41 across 12 starts with more sinkers. Now, his peripherals also not quite as dazzling as the results, but uh, the peripherals for Bayo better than they are for France and does get a lot of ground balls, which does help. So my model has Boston winning this game 56.9% of the time. Their current implied odds are 54.6%. So not a huge gap, but does favor Boston in this game. And I agree with what the model is saying. So I will take the Red Sox to win over the Astros minus 120 for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Second money line is a bit longer and a bit riskier because we're going up against Clayton Kershaw. And it's with an offense that is not necessarily lit up lefties so far this year in the Arizona Diamondbacks. But I do think Arizona is undervalued here at plus 176 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This one is Clayton Kershaw taking on Merrill Kelly. And K Kershaw, the velocity for him has not looked great since he came off the IL. It's a three-star sample, and one of those is very, very short because it was suspended due to rain. But his fastball velocity is down about 0.7 miles per hour from where it was right before he hit the IL. And his slider is down 0.6 miles per hour. Kershaw has still been effective because he has shown in the past that he does not need massive velocity to be good. And his velo this year pre-injury was up from where it was last year when he had very good results. So he doesn't need to have good velocity to be Clayton Kershaw, but it is a little bit concerning. Now he's facing Merrill Kelly. He is also semi-fresh off the IL. Seven stars for him. And Kelly's velo is also down since he came off the IL. but. He's looked really good, 3.55, skill interactive ERA, 28.6% strikeout rate in that time. If we look at the one star for Kelly against the Dodgers in this band, which was back on August 9th, so about three weeks ago, a big enough buffer where there's not a ton of familiarity here. We saw Kelly throw six shutout innings. Now, just two strikeouts in that game compared to two walks, so was not lights out by any means, but he pitched pretty well. I've got Arizona's win odds of this game above 40%, and their implied odds of plus 176 are 36.2%. So I feel like we're a bit too low on Arizona in this game. So I do want to take their money line plus 176 to win here, taking on the Dodgers. So the two money lines I like for tonight are going to be the Red Sox uh, at minus 120 and the Diamondbacks at plus 176. Before we talk about the firm strikeout props I like for tonight, do you want to talk quickly about Merrill Kelly in this Dodgers game? Because FanDuel's markets are different than what you'll see elsewhere. Uh, if you go elsewhere, you can get Kelly over five and a half strikeouts in alternate markets at around plus 140, at least you could earlier on today. Currently at FanDuel, his strikeout prop over five and a half is plus 118. So FanDuel is higher than the market on Merrill Kelly with regards to his strikeout prop. I think there's interest there for me personally. Uh, looking at Kelly, I, I haven't projected above this number. So I do have interest in, in the over, but I kind of want to see whether the market goes towards FanDuel, where we see the the over five and a half um, start to shorten elsewhere while FanDuel stays around the same, or do we get a better number at FanDuel later on today? Again, it's five and a half plus 118. So if you open up your FanDuel Sportsbook app, have to listen to this, and you see that uh, over five and a half, whether it be the base market or the alt market at six plus strikeouts, and you see that at longer than plus 118, I'd be intrigued about taking that, you know, see where it's stabilized, wait for it to settle in. But I think that that is a spot I'd want to go. So I'm keeping tabs on the Merrill Kelly strikeout market right now. Again, it's five and a half uh, plus 118 at FanDuel right now. But I'd check back on that later. If it's pretty steady there and you see other books starting to crack towards FanDuel and get towards FanDuel on that number, then maybe you want to dive in at that point. But for right now, I think this is more of a wait and see market than it is one I want to dive in immediately. Let's talk about the strikeout props. I do like where they currently stand as of right now. The first one is also in a West Coast game. That is Alex Cobb taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Now, the Reds are a high strikeout team, but I feel like the market here is a bit high on Cobb, higher than I, I think it should be personally. His strikeout prop right now at FanDuel is five and a half with the under at minus 134, and I do like the under at that number. Now, Cobb, again, high strikeout matchup at home, but I think it's about a strikeout higher than where I'd put it. Cobb has gone back to using his curveball more across his past nine starts. And in that time, he has a 18.3% strikeout rate. And he's had more than five and a half strikeouts just twice. Now, both of those games where he did go over were at home. And he's made just four total, total home starts. So he's gone over it in two out of four home starts. But 
when he faced the Reds on the road in Cincinnati just after the All-Star break, Cobb had zero strikeouts across four and a third innings. So even against high strikeout teams, he can have somewhat of a dud performance. Just not a huge strikeout pitcher generally, and I need a bit more to be intrigued by this number, even if he is at home against a higher strikeout team. So Cobb under five and a half strikeouts, minus 134. I think that's the right way to go. I uh, mentioned that he's been using his curveball more. He's been using that more at the expense of his slider, a, a pitch that he has been tinkering with throughout this year. Usage on has been up and down, up and down. And more recently, it's been down. And I feel like that does make Cobb a bit of a lower strikeout guy. So I think that based on the pitch mix, based on the results, um, I do think that under five and a half is the way to go. Cobb projected for me 4.74 strikeouts for tonight. Elsewhere for strikeout props, I'm going to turn to the uh, Rangers and the Mets for tonight, where you find Andrew Heaney on the road taking on the Mets. And I think I've been under, uh, I've been on Heaney's under a lot recently. I could actually just search that right now if I wanted to. Um, But I feel like for the most part, we're still seeing Heaney get a lot of respect for being a high strikeout guy in the market, but he hasn't really been that pitcher as much this year, especially recently. He has been going back to throwing a slider a lot, and <clears throat> that does, in theory, make him a higher strikeout guy because sliders tend to be higher strikeout pitches. But that hasn't really happened. He's been using more sliders across his past 15 starts. And in those 15 starts, his strikeout rate is 23.9%, a pretty modest number. So that's kind of weird. And he has still had issues with hard contact. He's letting up a, a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls. That can get him in trouble. He has a 4.41 skill interactive ERA and a 4.81 ERA. And that leads to increased risk that he could let up a lot of runs and get chased from this game early. So that does factor into a strikeout prop as well. He needs top five and has strikeouts just three times in this 15 start sample. And I've got him projected for 4.76 tonight. So well below this number, it has moved. Heaney under five and has strikeouts is now minus 118. So it's moved a bit. There is some interest in the under on Heaney right here, but I do still think that the under is the right way to go. I mentioned I thought I had been on Heaney's under quite a bit recently. In total, I've been on Heaney's under strikeout prop uh, seven times so far this year. It's hit five times, so that doesn't really matter. That's relevant because it's been at different numbers. Uh, I had under four and a half at one point, so, uh, but it's been successful. So I do feel like books are having a hard time catching up to the fact that Heaney is not as high of a strikeout guy as he was last year, earlier on this year. And they're still setting his number a bit too high. So at five and a half uh, minus 118 on the under, I do still think that there's value in going against Heaney for tonight. The final strikeout prop I've got here is actually an over. First over we've had across the uh, past couple of shows for this week. That is in the White Sox and the Orioles game. I like Jesse Schultens over three and a half strikeouts at minus 112. Now, Your interest in that market will depend on how much faith you put into what Schultens has done as a starter so far this year, because when he was a reliever, pretty low strikeout guy. But as a starter, he's actually been doing pretty well. Now, that's weird because he's a 29-year-old guy, not super young, not figuring something out there in that regard. And you never expect guys to get more strikeouts as a starter than they did as a reliever, at least from a strikeout rate perspective. But... Schultens has, and I do think it's intriguing that he does back that up from what he did in AAA. Made nine starts down there. His strikeout rate was 23% with a 12.6% swinging strike rate. So he got strikeouts in AAA as a starter. He's getting them so far in the majors. And he's getting a pretty long leash. He has had 90 plus pitches in three of his past four starts. So I don't know why Schultens is getting more strikeouts right now. I just know that, that he is. And three and a half to me says... They're pretty skeptical, which is fair. He's facing Baltimore's offense, a very good offense, not a high strikeout offense. 22.2% strikeout rate for them against righties on the current active roster this year. So it's not as if the situation is great. It's actually kind of bad, honestly, given that I like Baltimore quite a bit. But I just think that Schultons is probably due a bit more respect than what this number is getting him. So I will go over three and a half on Schultons at minus 112. The three strikeout props I like right now for tonight, Andrew Heaney under five and a half minus 118, Jesse Schultens over three and a half at minus 112, and Alex Cobb under five and a half minus 134. All those numbers available right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
As mentioned, though, we got to go through our Dinger Tuesday pick for this blessed Tuesday over at FanDuel Sportsbook, which will bring us right back to that Astros and Red Sox game. I mentioned that J.P. France is starting for the Astros. And the odd thing about J.P. France is that despite the fact he is a righty, he can get clobbered by righties. He lets up a lot more fly balls to righties and lefties. The fly ball rate a lot, or the ground ball rate for France against righties is 33.3%. Versus 56.1% against lefties. That's allowed righties to have a 471 slugging percentage against him. Now, tonight he's facing the Red Sox. Think about the Red Sox. You think about a lot of good left-handed batters. Rafael Devers, Tristan Casas, guys like that. The one righty you could like overall is Adam Duvall, but his home run odds are Fanduel pretty short at 3-1. to one. So instead, I want to dip a bit lower. We can find Justin Turner at 5-1 to one tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And Turner's not a guy you're typically going to think of against a righty. But again, France doesn't really pitch like a righty because his splits are so reverse what you would think. And Turner has been showing a bit more juice recently. His barrel rate in August is 9.8%, which is still not high, uh, but it's better than it was. His ISO in August is 266. He has five home runs, and two of those have come across the past three games. Now he's... Playing in Boston, which means as a righty, he's dealing with the green monster. And that can be both a blessing and a curse. It's a short porch, which is good. But because the wall is so high, a lot of line drives will not be home runs. But Turner's fly ball rate in August is 52.9%. So much higher now than it was before. So I think it's kind of a convergence of a lot of things. It's Turner getting more fly balls recently, getting more barrels playing at a spot where if you put the ball in the air, you can't hit a dinger and facing a guy who lets up a lot more fly balls to righties than he does to lefties. So if I'm looking for a dinger Tuesday bet over at FanDuel Sportsbook, I'm going to lean towards Justin Turner five to one to hit a home run for tonight. Uh, it's a game with a total of 10 runs. So you're benefiting more from dinger Tuesday and a high total game. You get the benefit of those, that $5 bonus. So I'm going to go Justin Turner five to one as my dinger Tuesday bed for today over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's going to be all that we have here for today here on covering the spread. As mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow with Dr. Ed Fang breaking down his favorite bets for week one across college football. We'll talk about the week's biggest games and get you ready uh, for those with Ed's bets via the power rank. If you got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck with your Dinger Tuesday bets and other bets across Major League Baseball. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>